coronary arteries is one of the very important topic in anatomy they arise from the ascending aorta whenever the ventricle undergoes diastole that is the time they get filled with the blood and they have the maximal blood flow coronary is flow is maximum whenever the heart is in diastole at the time of the systole when the heart contracts then there is a compression of the arterial branches of the myocardium and hence coronary blood flow is lowest at the time of systole and highest during the time of the diastole is what need to be remembered you all know very well we have an ascending aorta arch of aorta pulmonary trunk and from the aorta the left coronary artery is arising and the left coronary typically sends a branch called left anterior descending artery which is also called anterior interventricular artery then we have a right coronary artery which will be giving rise to the marginal artery and also to the posterior interventricular artery also originates from the right coronary artery is what need to be remembered so this is a typical picture heart in a ventral view now tell me doctor between all the chambers which is the more anterior chamber immediately substernal in location it is the right ventricle which is more anterior than left ventricle right atrium is more anterior than left atrium hence if you want to visualize the left atrium we go through the esophagus transesophageal echocardiography is what we basically do and this is the dorsal view dil ke piche kya hai so heart in the dorsal view that we are typically seeing over here and uh, you see most of the left ventricle typically for the heart in the dorsal view is what need to be remembered <coughs> now right coronary artery from where does this basically arise doctor we have an anterior aortic sinus in the ascending aorta typically the right coronary let us see where is the right coronary doctor typically right coronary we are talking about the right coronary which is running behind so the right coronary runs between the root of the pulmonary trunk and right auricle and descends in the right coronary sulcus and mainly it supplies the right atrium and the right ventricle <coughs> now what are the <coughs> branches what are the branches of right coronary artery <coughs> Vijay Rohit is saying the voice video clear but uh, broadcast is getting stuck there may be local internet connection is the underlying cause doctor otherwise from here the broadcast is uh, seemingly good even for the students currently attending from all the way china and uh, on this end kanyakumari and that end jammu so <clears throat> Yes, a nodal artery is a branch of the right coronary artery. This is one of the favorite questions of the examiner. Why, doctor? If the right coronary artery occludes, then our pacemaker get affected, and the heart loses the rhythm. So, yes, a nodal artery supplies the yes, a node and also the right atrium. Right coronary artery gives rise to marginal artery, which supplies the inferior margin of the right ventricle. it gives rise to posterior descending artery whereas anterior descending artery is a branch of left coronary artery and what is posterior descending artery will be doing it will be supplying a part of the septum interventricular septum and the left ventricle and the av node these are all supplied by the posterior interventricular artery then very very important is the av nodal artery which is the branch of uh, right coronary so it supplies the av node is what need to be remembered so sa nodal av nodal posterior interventricular marginal these are all the branches of right coronary so from there left coronary will be originating doctor left aortic sinus of the ascending aorta typically it is more shorter than the right coronary artery 
and uh, though it is shorter, it supplies more amount of myocardium than that of uh, the right coronary artery. Now what are the branches? Anterior interventricular artery which is also called left anterior descending artery which is the main supply of the blood to the interventricular septum in the apex of the heart originates from the left coronary artery. What is the other name given for the left anterior descending artery doctor? Widow's artery. One of the very common cause for the death of a 60, 65 year old man while returning from the office on a cold, clammy evening, suddenly had a chest pain and had a ventricular fibrillation with sudden cardiac death. Widow's artery is the name given for the left anterior descending artery. Circumflex artery, what will you remember? Typically, it gives rise to the left marginal artery. We said the uh, the marginal artery on the right side is given by the right coronary. Whereas on the left side it is given by the circumflex branch which is the branch of the left coronary artery. And it supplies the circumflex supplies the left atrium and left ventricle and it anastomoses with the terminal branch of the right coronary artery. Now let us talk about cardiac veins. We have one main vein which is called coronary sulcus is the major vein. It is the largest vein which is draining the heart, the coronary sulcus, coronary uh, sinus. It typically lies in coronary sulcus which separates the atria above from the ventricles below. And like any other vein, coronary sinus also drains into the right atrium, opening between the IVC and the AV opening and it has one cusp valve on the right margin of its aperture. So we are talking about the coronary sinus, it has one right and left. So it has one cusp valve is there on the right margin of its aperture. So what does coronary sinus ultimately will be receiving doctor? It will be receiving the great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein and small cardiac vein and also the oblique vein of the left atrium and the posterior vein of the left ventricle, they all drain into the coronary sinus. Let's talk about each of these veins. Great cardiac vein, it typically begins in the apex of the heart, essence along with the left anterior descending artery of the left coronary, left coronary's branch. And typically it will be ultimately merging into the coronary sulcus, I mean coronary sinus. Middle cardiac vein, what does it basically accompany? It accompanies the posterior interventricular branch, just like uh, great cardiac vein accompanies the left anterior descending. The posterior interventricular branch which is arising from the right coronary, it is accompanied by the middle cardiac vein and it drains into the right end of the coronary sinus where you are having a valve in the coronary sinus. Then small cardiac vein, it accompanies the marginal artery which is a branch of the right coronary artery and it ends on the right end of the coronary sinus it also. Then oblique vein of the left atrium, it drains into the left end of the coronary sinus. Then anterior cardiac vein, anterior cardiac vein drains the anterior right ventricle. This is the most important MCQ in the entrance. All other cardiac veins, where did they drain into? Coronary sinus and coronary sinus in turn has drained into the right atrium. But anterior cardiac vein, instead of draining into coronary sinus, it drains directly into the right atrium. When this question comes in the future AIMS exam, you will remember me in the exam hall. All cardiac veins drain to the coronary sinus except, what is your answer? Anterior cardiac vein, which drains directly into the right atrium. Then we have the 
smallest cardiac veins which are called vena cardis minimae they typically are the ones which are draining the venous output of the, directly from the wall of the heart heart also is a muscle like any other muscle any tissue need to have venous drainage heart also should have it and that is the purpose of this smallest cardiac vein which is called vena cardis minimae and they directly empty into the chambers so that's all about the coronary circulation in the anatomy which you need to be very very sure about